There it is. There it is. That is what I was looking for. I, Gene Williams, founder and administrator of Warchant.com. I looked at the third quarter and I scoffed at it. Florida State came out, <laughs> took care of business today in the way that you wanted to see. They hashtag took the damn hill. Florida State is moments away from being 8-0 and on the season and another ho-hum victory at a place that's been a house of horrors. This is the War Chant Game Day post-game call and show, brewed up by our friends at DeLuna Coffee. As I said, he's Gene Williams. My name is Tom Lang, and Florida State will enter the month of November, Gene, undefeated. That is a good, good feeling. How are you this afternoon on location? Tell the people where you are. I am in an undis- undisclosed location in the Georgia mountains. Nice. Let's say that. So I, nice. I'm chilling a little bit. I just knew they were the boys were going to take care of it. And can I say without being too cheesy that FSU has exercised its demons, mm. um, you know, by taking out the little pesky demon deacons who have really been a thorn in FSU's side the last few years. So I know you and I both picked similar scores that were the ones in the staff. Let's throw it out there now to pick FSU to get into the 40s. Because I really I know there's a lot of trepidation by the staff and by uh, a lot of fans going into this game. And I get it. Based on the history of this team, they seem to always have FSU's number. But just what I saw on film, this was a not a good offensive team. I didn't see them really generating anything uh, without the help of the officials. And I think one of those touchdowns basically was with the help of the officials that they got today. And, you know, it was the most complete game, Tom, that I think we've seen from quarter to quarter. Yeah, there was a, you know, it's a sleepy nooner in Snuggy Hill. So you had to go take a nap for one quarter. Yeah. Which they did in the third yeah. quarter when it was yeah. nine not they were outscored nine nothing, but you missed you missed your first field goal. Fitzy, you've been doing great. If you're gonna miss it when you're up 30 points or whatever that was and you miss it, that's the time to miss the field goal. So I'm uh, you know, okay. Keon Coleman, another great game, but just like a man amongst boys, you know, at times mm-hmm. with him out there look great. And I love the fact, Tom, we get into this a little bit more of the schematics, but I love that they employed with with a lot of the wide receivers out, including Johnny Wilson, they employed more of that short shorting dump off game to the running backs a little bit to yep. the tight ends as well, which I think was a nice addition, which I want to see this team do more of instead of continually trying to go vertical, especially when you don't have the talent that you usually have back there. The Florida state is running the Mario Cristobal right now. They're putting the knee to the turf inside a minute to go. So this is going to be a yep. final score for Florida state. Uh, 34 of the points that they scored came in the first half and uh, that's all they needed really. Uh, for today's game, you felt like Gene, if they were going to get into the upper twenties, lower thirties, Wake was not going to be able to run him down. And uh, six of Wake's points come in third quarter garbage time. That's right. I will call actually. Uh, let's see, nine of them, uh, nine points in the third quarter garbage time for Wake Forest. I get it. There are some out there that are saying, "Where's the complete game for Florida State?" Mm-hmm. They did it. The first half, this game was over. Dave Clawson told you how over it was when he kicked a field goal on their opening drive of the second half. He knew that Wake wasn't going to run Florida State down. This is exactly what you wanted to have, especially when you're shorthanded on the offensive side. Gene, I am tickled today. I am enjoying a nice little espresso from our friends at DeLuna Coffee, and I'm going to pour it out right now in celebration as Florida State, it is a final, wins the ball game by a final score of 41-16, to 8-0. and 0. Tell us, Gene, what it is that you're drinking from the, uh, the Blue Ridge sector of the country. Yes, yeah, since we are in Georgia, I'd like to go try the local. Well, it's not really a local brewery, but it's close enough. It's from Athens, which let's go Bulldogs today, of course. Mm. Um, anyway, in honor of them uh, playing the uh, Lizards today. So we're doing, it's called Academia Brewing Company. I've not tried this before. It looked cool. So they call this a Norwegian wheat ale from uh, Academia Brewing Company. So we'll give this one a shot today as we as we pour it into the glass. So I'll let you know how it is. All right, we'll see uh, how many Tomahawk helmet stickers Gene gives that beer in just a moment as he gives you a proper review. Uh, this is the War Chant Game Day postgame call-in show. We'll be getting to your calls here shortly on the postgame show as Florida State is 8-0. You'll see the commercial a little bit later, folks, from our friends at DeLuna Coffee, but the script was wrote, written by Brett Lemix, uh, Ed and Brett Lemix, 30-plus years of experience in the coffee game, that said, picture this, it's 8-0. Florida State is on the road at Pitt. Having ravaged the ACC schedule before them, largely true, largely true. Florida State is undefeated going into November for the first time since I think maybe one of the shows in 2015 we cared about, but certainly 2014. Wow. The college football playoff show, the ranking show, matters to us for the first time this decade. It's been a minute, 
That comes Tuesday night. We'll see where Florida State slots in. But this is the exact kind of win that you're looking for, Gene. Nobody can caveat anything about what Florida State did today to an above 500 opponent in Wake Forest. They hammered Wake Forest. And, Gene, I will say they did so in spite of Tobacco Road striped finest uh, efforts in the first half, which was, again, a lot to overcome. The third quarter, they hit Florida State again with a bunch of ridiculous moments where you say, I can't wait to get out of this conference. And yet, it, it did not matter. It did not you know matter. What? You're right, Tom. But you know what? In a way, it, I, I guess at first I knew going into this game, it's Wake Forest. They're the love child of the ACC. They oh. they always, I, even I think against some other ACC teams, they always seem to get the refs on their side all the time. So you knew going in, so it tempered it a little bit. I was like, okay, you just know you're going to have to take them on. And then the fact that, I mean, I, FSU just so outclassed them. The officials really couldn't do much. Um, they mm-hmm. couldn't even help Wake cover the spread. They just they weren't they weren't good enough. The refs weren't on their game. They couldn't come through for Wake <laughs> today. So they tried to, especially in the third quarter. Yep. I think it was fifty five to nothing in penalties and fifty five yards to zero on the other end, which really helped them get those nine points um, that they got that quarter. And you know when you see when you see quarterback sliding and getting hit, and not only hit guy throwing his arm down on his helmet after the slide. And that's, you know, that's going away. That's come on. That's so obvious. Every official on the field can see that. Yep. I mean, it's it's ridiculous that stuff like that go, let's, is let go time and time again. But again, who cares? Florida State hey. blew the hell out of Wake Forest and all is good in the world. FSU's 8-0. It, it's close. For those of you that care about covers, it was close because of the officials. I think they were worth a score or two once again today. But it doesn't matter. I'll go through some numbers here for Florida State. <laughs> Uh, if Director Ben has the stats behind the scenes, he can pull those up at any time, but I'll run through them. Jordan Travis threw for 359 yards today and three touchdowns. He was outstanding. There was one moment early in the game, the TV cameras didn't pick it up, but our Corey Clark did because he was in the press box. It looked like Jordan was throwing it directly to Wake Forest and, and one of their safeties yeah. for a dropped interception. Well, Keon Coleman slipped and fell down in that moment. Uh, other than that, Jordan was absolutely brilliant, and he got away with that particular moment. 359 is what it says on that stat sheet, and uh, I'm also showing that Jordan Travis uh, today, let's see, where's the rushing totals? 29 yards, including a rushing touchdown. Four total touchdowns accounted for today Ooh. for Jordan Travis. And then your leading receiver today, oddly enough, in terms of yardage, one Trey Benson. How about that? A hundred yards nice. for Trey Benson, including a long 80 yard touchdown that was beautifully drawn up, Gene. They had a motion from the left to the right to free up an extra man. There are two blockers downfield, offensive linemen downfield, a nice little screenplay, and Trey Benson was off to the races. That's all in part of a 155 yard from scrimmage day for Trey Benson. Uh, he had a touchdown late in the game, Gene, on a third and goal from the 18 yard line. An outstanding day from Trey Benson. All-purpose yardage again, 155 yards on 14 different touches. Keon Coleman continues to shine. He was brilliant. A one-handed catch. Uh, Another brilliant catch in a one-on-one situation earlier in this game. Two touchdowns for Keon Coleman. He was awesome. And then defensively speaking for Florida State, Gene, this is one a number that we've been hearing about a lot from the fan base, and and rightly so to a degree. Five sacks on the day for Mm, the defensive front. Jared Verse had two of those and 10 tackles for loss for Florida State. A comprehensive win for the Seminoles on both sides of the ball. They had 300-plus yards in the first half. There was a graphic at halftime that Florida State, uh, well, actually before halftime, that Trey Benson's touchdown, Gene, was 80 yards. Wake had 81 at that point. They had uh, Jordan Travis total yards, and it was into the hundreds. And Mitch Griffiths, the quarterback for Wake, had two two total Mm -hmm. yards that were coming in. Uh, to halftime. This was just dominant, Gene. Across the board, everywhere you look, there's good news on the stat sheet. Yeah, it's great to see Jared Verse and all people are like, where's Jared Verse? Where's Jared Verse? I think he's played pretty well, but it hasn't put up the sack numbers. He got a couple sacks. Maybe he's a big force on defense. Great having him out there. I, I, I don't know how many tackle totals he had, but we knew Braden Fisk could have a big day today, and I think he penetrated a lot. And Really, that slow mesh yep. is good. That thing is so annoying to watch. It was so fun to see FSU blow that thing up time and time yes. again. Like you mentioned, 10 tackles for loss. That's doing some things. When you they have to go behind the stick so many times, that really helps. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Tom. I was going to say this is where you know the the away book. We'll see what the final numbers say. Um, but it has, it has Braden Fisk with three tackles and none for loss and no sacks. So like what you know what happened on the two point play. So uh, yeah. Braden was a big factor in this game. The defensive line, Gene. There were a couple of sacks of the quarterback where three or four guys are there just caving in the Wake Forest mm-hmm. offensive line. Uh, they did a really good job today. This they really was, did. 
If you were what? looking for a no sweat Saturday afternoon, you absolutely got it today. I know what the third quarter looks like, but you've got officiating. You've got uh, just no. This is but not you know we're all zen, Tom. We don't care about the officiating. We knew it was going to happen. It didn't matter. Correct. FSU well, beat FSU beat Snuggy Hill, the officials, and the ACC, and they blew them away. So we are looking forward to a do. photo from Ira and Corey in addition to the wrap. Hopefully there's a flag planted on the damn ah. hill. That's what we did today. But I'm telling you, this wasn't this never sniffed Boston College. This mm -hmm. never sniffed that kind of a scenario. I thought they were fine today, no, straight, straight forward. Hey, a couple of things, Tom. First of all, are we pretty cool with the ice uniforms? I mean, obviously they played well. I don't mind. I like the fact that, and look, I'm the traditional guy. I don't usually like stuff, and I love those gold helmets. They're the best helmets, in my opinion, in college football. So anytime you take those away, I'm not happy generally. But the fact that Wake was all black, it was yeah. kind of a cool contrast that you are all white. So I don't, as long as it's not a staple, it's not a regular thing. Maybe once a season in certain situations, you pull out the ice. I like those. So I, that's a positive there. The one thing I want to get your opinion on, Tom, and I've seen this more and more in college football, in a couple FSU games is these late substitutions by defenses. Yeah. And it looked like twice Wake did that. And it twice Forest State had to call timeouts because mm -hmm. they're substituting to the last second. I, I, I don't get it. I know one time Wake got called for a flag for yep. basically doing this, but there's something, maybe this is an off season fix that they have to do something to stop this. There's only at some point you can no longer substitute or whatever the case is. Yeah. I think um, that's a situation where Wake, I think was warned probably earlier in the half when they were taking their time. They read the rule before halftime. Uh, Bob Wachusen did on the broadcast, and he said that it's a, you have a reasonable amount of time. Mm -hmm. So there is latitude given to the officials to determine what is reasonable. But you could tell that Wake was substituting just for the hell of it. If Florida yeah, State but... had a late sub, 10 seconds left, there's a kid that they want to be on a, in on that play, but they send somebody in from the sidelines to force Florida State's hand. Uh, one time it happened in the third and 36, I think it was. Um, and then, you yeah. know, another time was before the half when they took too long. And the official, the, the umpire, just said, the hell with it. You, you guys are taking too long. Go ahead and, and try this kick before we go into the halftime locker room. And that's when Clawson lost his mind, but they were killed for an illegal substitution. Sometimes, Gene, in short, I think it's our sloppiness. And then other times, I think it's just coaches taking advantage of the latitude given to them by the rules because they think, what's the worst that can happen? A five-yard penalty or they have to spend a timeout. So it's worth it to the coaches to give a shot at that. Pure gamesmanship, but again, something that did not yeah. matter. Well, like I said, I, I would hope they would look at this in the offseason and maybe instead of reasonable, give a certain time. This is your last time you can substitute somebody and something like that. The yep. other thing, the only real negative I could find, you know, they, they slept walk through the third quarter. Like you said, we knew the game was over. So really, you can nitpick and say that's a problem, not that big a deal to me. Um, I guess the only thing I was a little bit not thrilled about is the fact that no other wide receiver really stepped up. Kentron Portier had the one catch early on. Yep. Other than that, that group of wide receivers just completely disappeared. Now I will say Morlock and Bell stepped up and did fine in this game along with Keon. I, and I wonder if this would have been the game if Destin Hill was healthy, this might've been a game where he might've really broken out. It's a shame that he yep. was not available for this game. I would like to see what, cause he would have been the clear number two receiver in this game so i'm a little i would like to see somebody whether it's williamson or portier drop the ball yep. um i mean jakai was okay i mean it just nobody jumped out again i'm nitpicking 99 percent of this thing is very positive but that's something i would have liked to have seen yeah jakai is a shoestring tackle away from maybe scoring on a throw yeah. over the middle um i thought you know underrated ball of the day from jordan was the one to darion in the end zone that's on darion for not coming down with mm. that catch it's a, it's a little fade that's an outstanding ball uh, Jordan is just doing counting there. Wake has five people to the right against three receivers. He's like, all right, I got a one-on-one -on, -one on top of Darion. Great ball thrown. The best ball of the day without question was the one to Kyle Warlock, Warlock in the oh. second half. Teardrop oh. right there. That is a fourth quarter dime, Gene. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what you want to see. Jordan had a really good day today. I, I get he it. Did. There were a couple of near misses. The one Keon Coleman falls on on the first drive of the football game. Uh, in terms of putting throws in danger, but largely speaking, I think this is one of his sharper efforts. Um, I'm not saying it's because Johnny Wilson was out, but Gene, the play calling was a little bit different. As you said, they're getting the underneath stuff going. The simple flare to Trey Benson on a third down was a great play. It's, it's something you don't see a whole lot of from us. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just, yeah, there's a lot of, there's so much good to take away from today. It, it, it doesn't that help his NFL stock too, because that's something I think the, when the NFL is going to look at, and I know they made a point, RG3 brought that up a little bit during that. It's something he really worked on the offseason was his receiving game. 
And I think that's something that's going to make him more marketable in the NFL because you anybody watches that, you need to be, you know, if you're going to be a three down back, you better have the receiving chops. They're not even a three down back. You better be able to do it. And he's improved that a lot. I'd like to see them do that more because you see when he gets the ball in the open field, when he gets that head of steam going in open space, he's a pretty special guy. He's, he's a lot faster than people think he is. And he's got the size and ability to break tackles. Uh, the low angle camera shot of the 80 yard touchdown really gives you from the end zone, mm -hmm. you know, as they're zooming out, like, you, man, you can tell how fast he's moving. It's unbelievable. And then, you know, one of the better throws of the day, Gene was taken off the board by a holding that, uh, oh, you know, uh, yeah. again, it's on Casey Roddick. It sounds like judging by the way Corey was tweeting, maybe the stadium video board showed a different angle. The TV angles showed nothing in, in the, in the way of holding on Casey Roddick because that throw to Kentron was oh, outstanding no. and that catch was outstanding. It was shades of uh, Winston to Kenny Shaw 10 years ago, just before the half against Boston college, same kind of sideline you pluck it and then you go in, mm -hmm. you know, that would have been a humongous moment for Kentron. That's wiped out that's by a, perhaps a ticky tack call. It, but this is a, this is just a, a comprehensive win for Jordan Travis today. Humongous game yeah, for him. Yeah. The numbers go along with the performance. This is very nice if you're trying to make a case to get an invite up to New York in December. Gene. Almost 400 total yards of offense in this game. Look, he did have the you know one or two passes that were you know probably would have had back. But like you said, Keon slipped on one of those. It's interesting that you brought up that holding call because I remember at the time it was an eye. They didn't show the play. Yep. But it was interesting, RG3 in the broadcast, if you remember, brought up the fact about the holding and on those plays. Go, when the quarterback does that and rolls outside and you're him, if you're the defensive guy, throw your hands up in the air like you're held and every time they'll call it like he saw him do that basically an acting job to get the hold. So I guess that's a credit to the defensive lineman for pulling a fast one on the officials there. If, if in fact, it wasn't a hold and it sounds like from what you said, Corey saw and other people there. It probably wasn't a hold, which is a shame. And I was critical of the receivers. I guess that would have changed my mind. Not really Kentron's fault that a yeah. ticky tack call, call, call that back. Because that was, he did go up and grab that away for the DB. That was a beautiful play. Yeah, Daniel Prentice points out in the chat. What's up, Daniel? How are you? The PI in the next play was bull, you know what, too. So he gets, yeah. he, <laughs> you get your, there's your S-bomb, Daniel. You get one a post game, just like Eric Angel gets one F-bomb per call. No, he doesn't get any more. Please, we're trying, <laughs> we're trying to stay. I talked to Eric. No more F-bombs on the show. Oh, you did? Okay, not, never mind. Never mind. Let's try not. I mean, it's not for a game like this. I mean, yeah. use your discretion. Yep. You know, maybe the Miami game, maybe Florida, AC, whatever, but not for beating the snot out of Wake. It's just, come on. It's not worth yep. it. And then also, Gina, a throw. This was a play kind of like last year against Syracuse where Jordan caught uh, defense napping. One of the touchdowns for uh, Keon Coleman was a simple stop because of the the, oh. the respect that the that the defensive back has for Keon. Well, did you see they did they did early they started bringing the blitz. I thought on that early on I go because I they showed early which is good by Jordan to make that snap and they started coming in. You go it's a blitz. So Ke he saw Keon he saw the guy back up. It's like okay he's one on one out in an island. This is perfect because yeah. I I will take Keon out in an island against one DB every time. Well, and that shows a different skill set from Keon. You see yeah. the the short area ability to make you miss from punt returns a little bit this year, mm -hmm. but uh at the Syracuse game last year, Jordan hit Malik McLean for one when he stiffed arm a kid into the ground and then Johnny Wilson because there was too much respect given at the line of scrimmage. Today that happens. Gene, I'll just say it. I love seeing more underneath stuff out of this yes. offense. It adds an element of danger. If you're a defensive coordinator thinking, I got to defend all fields instead of these one on one balls, mm -hmm. Florida State, Gene, I think, is emerging into something. They ran counter a lot better today. Yes. Florida State is emerging into something offensively that looks a hell of a lot more balanced than they did when we were exiting September. This has been a really good month mm -hmm. for adding the layers to the offense, I think. That's, and that's a great point. I remember a few weeks ago, it's Boston College, we were screaming about that when they kept trying to force balls downfield because you're like, well, we got Johnny, we got Keon. Let's just force that ball downfield. Certainly they're going to come up with a play, but there's nothing wrong with mm -hmm. taking that underneath stuff and letting your playmakers, you've got even those guys on short balls, but whether it's Keon, whether it's Shaheen Bell a couple times did that really well. We talked about Trey Benson doing that. It'd be nice if they got Destin Hill back out there because I think he's capable if you can get him in that range on some up the over the middle catches. I mean, if Kentron catches that one ball and doesn't drop it, it looked like he had a lot of open space. He might have been able to run for some stuff. So I agree. I would love to see that incorporated because if that starts being successful, Tom, yeah. That opens up everything. It is an extension of your running game to a point, you know, and I think that will open up the running game as well. If you get the, the out on the edges, they got to go out there. Suddenly you have more gaps in the middle of the field, and that allows people like Trey Benson and Philly to break some off. So good observation. I hope they continue to do this because, you know, against, their, you know, you're going to get some tough games coming up. I mean, Miami's going to give you everything they got. That's they're trying to save their season, yep. and that's going to make or break it. And we'll see how Florida does today against Georgia, but I'm still very – 
worried about a game down in Gainesville because that team is very different at home than they are on the road. A hundred percent. And uh, for those of you just joining us, because a lot of you joined us after the game was over, we went a little early when uh, it was garbage. <laughs> so welcome into the War Chant Game Day post game show brewed, uh, brewed by our friends at DeLuna Coffee. That's DeLunaCoffee.com. We'll tell you more about our friends that we love at DeLuna Coffee beyond telling you that uh, the, the BOGO is on still, folks. The Voodoo Blend, the Dark Espresso Blend from our friends at DeLuna Coffee is on. Buy one, get one free. Head to DeLunaCoffee.com right now or at your local Publix throughout the state of Florida, west of I-4, all the way through the western part of the Florida panhandle. That is our friends at Deluna Coffee. So, Travis, if you're one of those that are just joining us, I'm not worried whatsoever about the third quarter. It is garbage time, essentially. This is not like Boston College, and I think the officials had an awful lot to do with it, Gene. It all started with a tackle for loss that, oh, my God, DJ Lundy brought a running back to the ground after a five-second oh. match play, and you're going to go with a personal foul late hit. You never see that called. And whether it's NFL College High School, you see that five or six times a game. I don't think I've ever seen that call before. You tackle as they're going backwards, the whistle blowing as they're in motion, knocking them back, and he falls backwards. Why? Yep. You would literally be calling... I mean, five or six more penalties a game if you called that every time. That was ridiculous. But, again, it's ACC. It's Wake Forest. The only in-game post-game show you'll find anywhere. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. We, we did, like, a last garbage the time. The game was through. over, essentially, right, when we started? Right. I mean, it was it was over at halftime. And, and yeah. look, I'm the guy who, who calls for consistency in 60 minutes. Like, the Boston College game was a travesty. This was not the same thing. I just – I can't stress that enough. No. Enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of the slate. This was not the same thing as Florida State losing its edge on the road to Boston College. I think this was official, uh, official aided in the second half. And Florida State – I mean, Gene, they drive down there, and Fitzy misses his first kick of the season – from point blank range. So it's not like the offense completely went cold in the third quarter either. I think they were fine there. And I will say, if you like omens, if you like omens, I'll give you this one. Here's a nugget for you. The last time Florida state had a kicker with a perfect season that was snapped on the road at wake forest was 2013. When Roberto Aguayo oh. missed his only kick of the season, the only kick he missed all season was on the road in a blowout over wake forest 10 years ago. 10 years ago. So you like good omens? There's one for you. Fitzy missed a chip shot and, and was a stoink. There's no doubt about that. But the last time we saw a circumstance that was the same, it was Berto's only miss wow. in the national championship. Season. Nice pull there, Tom. I don't know. That's that's excellent. You were able to do that. So good. You know, hey, Fitzy, like I said, he's he's been – people have talked about him. He's had a great season so far. But just a 180 from last season. And, again, if you're going to miss it, miss it in a blowout win. You are forgiven. I tell you, if you watch the broadcast, they were trying like heck to jinx him. I mean, the kick before, I was like, I started to take a picture of it because like, oh, he's going to, they flashed up the perfect thing on a graphic. They kept talking about him like he's going to, and he made it. But then they did it again. The next one, like, we're going to get him this time. Sure enough, they did. But if that's it, if he follows it, doesn't miss another one, I think we'll take that. Great job, Fitzy. Just about 800 of you watching the post game show with us. Cheers to you and cheers to 8 and 0. Oh. Little sip, little silence yes. for a second. Mm, 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 mm. Delightful. We've this got a very good, by the way. This is very good. I'm enjoying How many helmet act- stickers, Gene? One to five. One to five. I'm going to give it about four and a half. I'm really enjoying this one. I don't know what the Norwegian means on the wheat ale. I don't know what it t- tastes like a really good wheat ale to me, which I like. I don't know what the Norwegian means, but heck, it, it works for me. That sounds like a good warm weather beer, too. It's a little bit warm up uh, in your neck of the woods. It, was it is surprisingly. It's, it's still beautiful up here, but yeah, it's been in the high 70s, did some hiking. There you go. Uh, but yeah, it's a little, you know, it's not bad. Morning's beautiful. It's in the, you know, High 50s, low 60s in the mornings, real nice. But yeah, we were hoping for a little cooler weather, strike up the fireplace, but nah. But we'll take it. It's been beautiful weather. The phone calls are coming up just in a moment. We've got some people right. to thank that have contributed to the program here already. Florida man in Texas, another delicious 40 burger. Mm-hmm. Knowles, consistent work, minimal mistakes, solid play calling. Hashtag finish the climb. I love it. That's a great observation. And Gene, we're going to make these 40 burger shirts. We'll make some, we'll make yeah. some 40 burger shirts. We all celebrate together when there's a 40 burger on the board. So thank you very much, Florida man in Texas. Always a big time contributor to the post game show. Joshua Benson was great today. Glad to see him bounce back. Coleman was a beast verse and Peyton feasted. I see a lot. Yep. Beast and feast. Very nice span with another huge kick return. Two of them. In fact, yes. you know what? There's another hidden play in the game, Gene. That mm-hmm. kick return from Deuce to put Florida State first down near midfield. It was on our own 40-yard line or thereabouts. In the moment, you're thinking, what are you doing? Why are you coming, <laughs> coming out from that yeah. in your own end zone? But he is shot out of a cannon 
you, you see what confidence does when somebody finally has the light bulb click on gene he's zero to 60 like crazy today yeah the special teams like we haven't talked about that much it is really starting to emerge right now between him and keon coleman getting so good on those kick returns it's like yep. i know we like before with Mike, it was so good on just securing it. But now you got a guy, if he does have a little bit of space with Keon's doing stuff, but you're right, Deuce Span is emerging. Or is it Deuce Spawn if we change his name? No. Chris Fowler. Back to um, it is, okay, we're not going to do that. All right. Um, he's been, uh, yes, you see the confidence now. He knows I am a weapon. He had, um, yeah, two returns for 74 yards in this thing. Yep. And again, flipping the field, position, that becomes another weapon for you in that. And he's such a young guy. And it's exciting to see him emerge at that position of what he can do. Um, so it's so exciting. It we talked about Fitz a minute ago. The kick and the punt returns are solid. Mm -hmm. it, they've been, it, they've been, this is what Mike Norbell preaches over and over. And we talk about all the time. They spend so much time in practice on special teams. And at times it gets frustrating because, like, sometimes how can they be this bad when they spend this much time? But you see it finally coming to fruition on all phases. So this is great to see. Yeah, very exciting for Deuce because it looked like he's so close. Once he gets past that first level, you're just kind of holding your breath because you know he's so close to breaking it. Yeah, it's strange given the way the season started when special teams was a little bit more inconsistent. You know, you never would have envisioned a day where you'd say the worst part of special teams was the kicking game, like you kicking mm -hmm. and punting. Like Mastro didn't have a great day today either. A no. couple of shortish punts, and yet it was the return game and the coverage that was really good. So uh, kudos to special teams. You could tell, Gene, uh, Wake called a line drive kick in the second half. They were about done with Deuce Span. They called a line drive, and, and Deuce, <laughs> Deuce was not able to return it. Uh, so, yes, uh, another thing for, for oppo opposing coaches to worry about mm -hmm. moving forward. So thank you to uh, Joshua for that contribution. Double D Supreme. It may just be ignorance on my part, but why does the NCAA allow conferences to have their own rests? It just seems like the Wild West kind of mentality, but on to Pittsburgh. Hashtag go Knowles. Yeah, if it, maybe when we get to the power two or power three days, Gene, when it's you know unified a little bit better, that's probably a half decade or a decade away. They'll do what um, you know the NFL did, where there's not AFC, NFC. They'll do what MLB did. There's not American League and National League. There's just one set of officials across the board. But we are not in that era. Aren't we no. reminded every week, Gene, that we have ACC officials to look forward to? I know. I've been preaching that for years. I, I hate the setup. But I, with the, the misconception is the NCAA doesn't run college football. The conferences run college football. So mm -hmm. they, that's the way they have it play out with their own officiating crews. But I, I, for years, I wanted the NFL model. I'm hoping at some point they break away, with, whether it's a power or whatever group is, how many teams you take off. And I think at that point, when it's closer to the NFL model, you would have a set group of referees that are not affiliated with any conference and they just go through. And that's the way – that'd be the fair way to do it because, you, you know, it doesn't work that way. And it works the way in other conferences. In the ACC, they seem to want to screw the team that might make them the most money and help the teams that don't make them any money. But you would think the motivation should be the other way around. It probably is in other conferences, but not in the ACC. I'm telling you, Gene, I was opining on the Jeff Cameron show this week that there's like rituals, there's torches and all this stuff where the officials get together. They bloodlet, worshiping Wake Forest. The amount of calls that Wake Forest gets, there has to be some kind of, um, I don't know, hidden society with these officials that goes on because it doesn't matter who the opponent is. Wake Forest gets the benefit of so oh, much. They love themselves some Demon Deacons. Also, Double D Supreme, last thing on that, as I understand it, too, their you know, salaries are higher and lower. Um, I think SEC officials make significantly more money than they ACC. Do. Like it's it's not all there's not one officials union where they're all paid the same. Oh, they, they do make more. The one thing I saw that I read was interesting. I don't know if you saw this, Tom, but it was the SEC officials. My understanding. So what happens is after a game, they immediately go into a film room and break down the plays, their mistakes, everything like that. So it's something they do that's unique. Where ACC, it's just you know, it's at the end of the year. It's like, well, let's review the plays. There is no in-season correction in the ACC. Again, that's maybe a being on the cheap, whatever it is. But you hear the process of how the SEC trains their officials throughout the entire season, where the ACC is just whatever. You could have the worst official all year long, and no one's going to stop them from doing this because there's no. You know, other than coaches sending in film, which apparently is ignored when FSU sends in mistaken calls. I mean, there's nothing done. I think they're giggling on the other side of the line when Mike uh, calls over. <laughs> yeah, man, is, sorry. Sure, We're buddy. Uh, Johnny Zeno Brigander. Uh, Brigardner, excuse me. Ring Gardner. Only upset today is me with the refs. Great first half. Still want uh -huh. to play all four quarters. Understandable. I'm not sure today. Thank you, Zeno. We very much appreciate that. And James S., you think we were 0-8 as much as everybody complains. Uh-oh, he's going Aaron <laughs> on you, R-E-L-A-X. 
Sign yeah. Aaron Rodgers. Hey, man. Wow. James, it ain't me. Well, today. the message boards, I, I love going in there. If you ever do yourself a favor, you don't go in there. It's if you're don't get stressed out about it. Go in for fun. Go check our message board. It doesn't matter what happens in the first quarter. <laughs> there is always people. Our defense sucks. It's time to look at a new offensive coordinator. Mike Norvell doesn't know what he's doing. I mean, you can go back, you can find those threads. It is hilarious. I mean, people just expect touchdown on every play and zero yards for the other team. I you know, but it, again, I get it. It's a passion of the fans why they act that way. Henry, thank you very much for the comment here. Definitely the most complete game we played so far, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Ditto. Ditto, my yeah. man. This uh, team has a serious business-like mentality, and I think it'll take us very far. Super hopeful after this one. Yeah, Gene, there's no talk about they didn't show up late for the game. They were they were ready mm -hmm. to go on time today. Florida State yeah, was right. sharp from the get-go. You know, there's this misnomer, I think, about the defense has slow starts. If you do a crunch on first drives for opponents, we're, we're turning in three and outs and stops an awful mm -hmm. lot more than we're getting scored on on opponents' first drives. It's just that the first half, there are more breakdowns in the second half. But FSU was ready to play. I, I had no illusions yeah. through a couple of drives. That it was like, oh, no, they're reading their press clippings or, or there's complacency here. I think Mike Norvell had them primed and ready to go today. You, th you think there was some just because of, because of Wake's recent history against Florida State, you think there's a little extra vinegar uh, mm -hmm. with this team? I know there was with the fans, but sometimes with the fans doing what the players and coaches do is a little different. But it did seem like there was a little bit more what for for this team just because of what Wake Forest has done recently. Yes, and and I should say this before we go to our first caller. Uh, Wes, hang in there. I'm going to get to you in just a second. Way to go, fans in the stadium. We oh, could yeah. hear you all game long. We could hear you from the start of the game, uh, the pregame show. Ira went down to Snuggy Hill and, and joined us for an interview on site. You could see how much garnet there was in the stands. You guys were phenomenal today. It was loud when Wake Forest had the ball, and you could hear it on TV. You could hear the war chant. You could hear all of it. It was You guys were fantastic today. And you took the hill. Congratulations. Yes. And full marks nice to the job. fans that were there. And today. mentioned on the broadcast, they mentioned it several times that there's a lot of FSU fans here. You know, when they notice it, it's legit. So great job, guys. Way to go. Now we go to our first caller of the afternoon, just after four o'clock on the East Coast on an eight and oh kind of Saturday for Florida State. We go to the villages. The phone lines were packed last week. He couldn't get in, but he gets in today. First caller on the board is Wes in the villages. Good afternoon, Wes. Welcome to the program. What's up, Gene and Tom? Good to catch up with you guys. Yeah, last week I left the stadium and stayed in Tallahassee, and I'm like, oh, I don't get through. And so when uh, Perry said I was the first call, I said, well, that's redemption uh, Saturday uh, today. And uh, so I uh, ain't a lot to say other than just it was an impressive game. That second quarter was so much fun to watch. It just shows you how uh, lethal this offense can be. And uh, all things considered, you know, being down uh, Wilson Hill, and, you know, I, I don't think Scott played. I didn't see it by yeah. O-line. But you you got to be pretty pleased. And one thing I will say, it's no, you don't need more evidence to know we got to get out of this conference and this officiating. I, you, you just – just when you – you know, you just – I just feel like we're never going to get called. We're just going to have to just accept it until we're out. I think that's uh, unfortunate. But to know that the calls aren't going your way and still play like that and, you know, dominate weight and get that monkey off your back after having, you know, hadn't beat them in several years. That felt really good. And I love hearing the war chant echo. And I had a lot of friends there and that was just a great turnout for our fan base. And uh, so other than that, yeah, I just general comments about the game and I'll see you guys uh, in two weeks for Miami. That's going to be a big one. Oh, and speaking of Miami, they're losing in dope South right now, seven to nothing uh, against Virginia. So I want to pass that along nice. That's fine for everybody. And uh, you guys don't forget to hit the thumbs up, subscribe to warchant.com, the best in the business. It's only a dollar for a month. You're crazy. You need to be, uh, have a temperature check for giving that kind of deal away. And y'all get you some DeLuna coffee. It's fantastic. Support everything. Hit the thumbs up. Y'all be good and go Noles. There we go. Wes. Thank, thank you, Wes. Up. As always, Mr. Promo himself. We look forward to seeing you at Hotel Indigo in the weeks to come. And hopefully Florida State at that point, Gene, is 9-0 and as they return home for the big matchup with Miami. So, uh, Wes, uh, good observations all around. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I posted earlier today, Gene, we were called for a horse collar in the second half. Nobody saw the horse collar in the first half. It's uh, the second drive. Oh, they saw it all over the place against, the D uh, against Florida State, didn't they? Good freaking Lord, Gene. Jordan is being dragged by his horse collar for about four or five steps. Here's a, here's a quick little shot of it. Look at that. Yeah. 
I mean, and it's three or four steps that that's going on for. And that's why he got up pissed off. He, if you saw, he was yeah. jawing with the defender. He found a way to not get hurt in this situation. But, man, the officials were, once again, just horrible. Yeah. But it doesn't matter because Florida State was better than the 11 that they were facing on the other side of the ball plus the crew. Hey, hey, one other thing we didn't talk about real quick before we go to another caller is Jordan. Did they? Well, I know he took off a couple times. It seems like I know we saw second half last week. The Jordan Travis starting to run again was a part of the offense. Mm -hmm. We saw that more in the first half, and my think I like doing that. And look, I get it. You want to you want to take chances, but what that does is that opens everything up. When they know early on, oh no, yep. he's a threat to run the football. You got them on roller skates at that point because they don't know you're doing that. You're doing the short passes. You got Keon down the field. You're running. I, to me, I like that. Instead of waiting until you have to, the game is too close in the second half, which it seems like they've done at times. Throw them that card early. Put the fear of God in them, and yep. then just give them the knockout punch. Yeah. So Jordan was sacked one time today. That was on the replay review when his leg was down, yep. and it accounted for a 12 yard loss. So if you're looking at the actual rushing yardage, it was six rushes for 41 yards today for Jordan. So he yep. had he would have had 400 all purpose yards if not for that sack. That is, I, uh, hate, that, I hate that college rule. It would have been 400 on the number. Exactly. Yeah, I hate right. that yeah. college rule. Yep. Totally yeah. agree. Uh, we now go live from stadium side, a fan who was there today. Again, one of the people that we saluted. You guys were fan freaking tastic today up in Winston Salem. We go to Philip. He's from Nashville, but he's at the game today and now he's basking in the glow. Philip, thank you for calling in. How was that experience for you, sir? Oh, it was fantastic, gentlemen. Fantastic. Gene, Tom, I appreciate you guys. You guys always do a lot. Uh, I love talking to you guys when I get the chance. Uh, the team showed up. They did what they were supposed to. Uh, you know, a couple of questionable calls, like always. The ACC, what can we do about it, right? Uh, but other than that, uh, uh, Toyota. No. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to get Uber to go downtown, guys. I'm sorry for that. But, uh, my, my main my main question is, is uh, you know, Ken Tron was out there. Obviously, Johnny Wilson wasn't out there. Uh, you know, we had a couple plays that were called for him. Do you think uh, that mismatch between them being on the same page and Ken Tron's not in, as, obviously, as much as Johnny Wilson is, do you think that's an issue going forward, or should we just depend on Johnny Wilson moving forward? You know, uh, plus, uh, we didn't run the ball very much in the beginning. There was a lot of a lot of uh, pass, pass plays called. Is it, was that purpose, you know, purposely doing that or, or, or anything else? But other than that, man, gentlemen, I, I love everything that Warchie does. Thank you guys so much. Uh, the Luna Coffee is always amazing, and uh, keep everything going. Appreciate you guys. Thank you very Thanks, much, Philip. Promo there. Appreciate there we go. Bogo. It's Bogo. Right. Get you two for one. Thank you, Philip. Yeah. And great job today, Philip. You did a fantastic job. Um, yeah, Gene. Which would you like to start with? Uh, the, the yeah, start I mean, we at the beginning. Like there, were, I think there were six straight passes to start the game, and obviously they were there. They're yep. moving the ball down the field, and as you know, Mike Norvell scripts the beginning, so obviously that was a plan going in to mm -hmm. throw the ball on them. Um, I mean, I have absolutely no issue with that at all. Uh, again, the, the kind of they were giving coverage where guys could get open, especially when Keon a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations for that. I was okay with that. So, yeah, in terms of again, I don't we we can't I don't know the status of Johnny and uh, Destin, but I gotta think the good chance maybe one of them is back at least next week, maybe both. I think that might help the offense a little bit more if you get some of these guys back out there. I mean, Kentron, Tom, you made a good point about the fact that you know he if not for that kind of questionable holding call. Then he would probably look at his situation a little bit different today that he stepped up. would like to see more out of Darian today. Um, you know, so we'll see how it is. Like I said, that was the one nitpicky thing I had that I was a little disappointed in the receivers other than Keon. So I'd like to see one of them step, but I think that will get better. No, agreed. Uh, look, it wasn't perfect. Um, you know, even that Kentron plays a broken place. So it's not like they scheme something up and, and he was open. Jordan rolls right and then fires the ball down the field. Uh, they're clearly not in sync the way that Johnny would be with Jordan, mm -hmm. but you kind of have to work through that because Kentron, Mike Norvell said this on the record, so we're not violating protocol. He was banged up. He missed an awful lot of the early part of the season. So when you're talking about chemistry, he was building, good in the spring. People forget how good he was last spring. He was unable to capitalize on the momentum from mm -hmm. spring. I mean, Keon Coleman's also going to put you down the depth chart, and for good reason. Like we get that. But Kentron was not available to, you know, continue that momentum moving forward. He's been out there, obviously, because he's played, but he's been out there the last few weeks as a regular participant. But, I mean, I'll estimate and say it's been three to four weeks since he's really been working mm -hmm. in the offense for a groove. And you could tell that he and Jordan just aren't quite in sync the way that Johnny and Jordan are. So I don't know that that's a concern per se. And then to echo Gene's sentiment, 
you know, Gene, you come out with a game plan. I think maybe because so many receivers were out, uh, maybe Mike Norvell says, I want to prove to the opposition that they're still going to have to think about the passing game. You can't just tee off against the run. They spread them out. Uh, kudos there. It was the Keon Coleman yeah, drive right. to start. It was the first four or five targets were to Keon. So uh, it all worked out. And then it was a quarterback scramble at the end. That was a pass call where you score your first touchdown. The blitz just didn't keep the uh, the contain on Jordan. And that's why when you have a quarterback with those kinds of legs, it ends up being a touchdown. So uh, all good things. And Philip, once again, thank you for calling from outside the stadium. Hope the Uber arrives safely for you, sir. Uh, <laughs> now we go to New York for the 40th time. The 40th time in the history of War Chant TV. It's Josh in New York. Josh, thank you for waiting for the better part of a half an hour. Welcome to the program. Josh, are you there? Oh, it didn't kick in. That's on me, Josh. That's on me. Here we go. Three, two, one. There you go, Josh. Welcome. Let me restart this. Happy <laughs> Tom and Gino! <laughs> What is going on? It's always a great day to get a win from the nose. Always a great day. I did not, like you guys, I did not have a problem with a single thing today. Um, I thought we played really well. But I did have, and, and, and you know, uh, it, it was so good to hear Robert Griffin point this out. But Jordan Travis, the only thing that irks me is that Jordan Travis is not getting talked about enough as a Heisman Trophy candidate. I mean, like, and I was looking up the Heisman contenders, and all these guys had awful games at some point. Mm -hmm. Awful games. Yep. Like, Travis is the only one that his bad game was like two touchdowns and an interception or something like that. I don't understand why, like, a guy that's thrown for like 18 touchdowns and two interceptions, almost 2,000 yards, is not getting talked about as a front runner with an undefeated top 14. I, maybe somebody else can answer that question for me, but it, it just bothers my mind. Love you, ESPN. Thank you. All right. <laughs> you Have go. a good one, guys. Uh, Josh, thanks, Josh. Uh, he's not wrong, Gene. Uh, Michael Penix, mm -hmm. who's considered the front runner. Uh, oh, that last game was awful. They did not score an offensive touchdown against Arizona State. So uh, Arizona State. Yeah, I think I think if it's me, I think it's Marvin Harrison Jr. is on the short list, and then still to be determined on what quarterbacks you would invite. But Jordan, I think the momentum's about to build for Jordan Gene. This is a humongous day. Sometimes the stat book is not indicative of the impact that Jordan has on the game. Today it was. I mean, you're talking about it. If Sack adjusted yardage, you're talking about 400 all-purpose yards and four touchdowns. Mm -hmm. Like that's the kind of the game that gets people's attention. I don't think this is a race that's over. By any stretch, I think Jordan still has a really good chance, Gene, um, to obviously make it uh, to New York, at least for an invite. But he should be talked about more because there have been clunkers uh, for the other candidates across the board. So good call, Josh. Well, isn't this yeah, Josh nailed it on that. But is this more of an exposure type thing? Like what what's going to move the needle for what really matters? The Heisman and that's publicity and that's ESPN. That's clips. That's TikTok clicks or something like that. You're going to get the exposure. I think the fact that outside of LSU, which was a long time ago in people's minds, FSU hasn't really played anybody. I mean, you look down, you say, well, they played Clemson at Clemson, but for whatever reason at the time, Clemson was not ranked. It was ridiculous, yep. but they were not ranked. And then you look the name, they played a ranked Duke team last week, but again, it's Duke. It wasn't basketball. No one in the national media is going to take that seriously. You just, he just, like I said, pretty much 400 yards against Wake Forest. So the problem is he's doing that. And I just don't think he's going to get the publicity. Now, what could change is if, again, Miami keeps winning, and you, and I think they're losing last I, I looked, which is just seven up or seven nothing. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Miami's still losing. Um, you know, maybe that game is a little bigger and maybe he, he blows up in that game. It gets him on there. But I just don't think he's getting the national push right now by the media, by social media, everywhere else. And I think that's affecting him. At the end of the day, we have these other guys are on bigger stages right now. Whether it's a perceived bigger stage or not, that's part of the problem of being in the ACC, especially when Clemson is down. This is kind of reminds me back in the 90s almost where it was FSU and everybody else. There just isn't anybody else standing out. So they're just – they're not getting that. Obviously, Florida's not what they used to be. Now we'll see. Maybe they'll go on a run. They'll do something else. But they need, they need him to have a big national game 
where he blows up and maybe he gets up talked about a legitimate candidate to win. He, I think he gets the invite, Tom, I guess right now everything's hold, mm-hmm. but I don't think he's a legitimate candidate to win it. And he should be. I think that that was the point there from Josh. I agree. I agree. He should be a candidate at this point because he has not had a clunker. It's a great argument. It's a simple one. Um, and we'll see if it's one that takes shape. You still got a month to go uh, in terms of creating your resume. Um, sometimes people are slow on the uptake. Uh, yeah. So a couple of scores that, you know, we don't do this very much in the uh, 330 uh, post games, meaning the noon kickoffs, but time to take a look around. Uh, Kansas is in decision mode here, fourth and four near midfield, down a point to Oklahoma. Look at this. If Oklahoma wins again, people are still going to like, there's people legitimately want to put them in over Florida State after UCF and Kansas. They should even be in the top 10. They freaking suck. Stop this nonsense. I mean, talk about game control. What are the odds ESPN brings up game control when they do the selection show and they talk about Oklahoma next week? No freaking chance. Or Washington and uh, Arizona yeah. State last week. Their only touchdown was a pick six late in the game. So that's one uh, set of scores. ACC scores are also interesting. I'm going to pull those yeah. up now. Uh, let us see. You've got, oh boy, NC State. Look at this. NC State up 24-7 to on Clemson. Wow. Ooh. Well, Clemson's packed it in. We have quit watch in Clemson, South wow. Carolina under Dabo Swinney. This is NC State. I got to check and see when's the last time they scored 24 in a two-week period of time on offense. 24 wow. points. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So, in their last pow- in their last three Power 5 games, their last three ACC games, NC State has amassed a total – Doing the math real quick of 34 points. Mm. They, oh, my 30, God. Yeah. 30, uh, sorry, 37 points in their last three ACC games. They have 24 on Clemson. And that defense, that's really good in the first half. So uh, interesting developments there. Notre Dame with a slim lead over Pitt. This is an elimination Duke, game Duke here. Me, Duke, the FSU hangover. I'm telling you, man. They, they gave everything they had to that FSU game. Interesting stuff. So Louisville up 14 to nothing in the second quarter. That makes uh, – Director Ben behind the scenes happy. That's his original affiliation. Of course, he loves Florida State more now, folks. But uh, Virginia up seven to nothing over Miami as well. So that's the rundown on the scores that are going around the country. One more call before we take a break. We go to Ocala, and we talk to who this Jeff is Ocala. This is not Gene oh. in Ocala. It oh, it's waiting for Gene. Jeff and Ocala, welcome to the program. Go ahead, sir. Hey, gentlemen. Uh, great show you got going on today. Um, I actually did have a few points I wanted to hit, but you guys are so in touch with the Florida state fan base that you've already spoken on the kickers and our great special teams that we got going on. So, um, at this point, thanks for the content, gentlemen, you guys keep me informed all day. Hang on, Jeff. We got to get something out of you here. So what was your favorite part of the game? Go ahead. What was your favorite part today? Oh, uh, for sure. It was the, uh, Keon Coleman catching the end zone, that one hand tap into the, to the end zone. I loved how I think it was RG3 said that was like a layup because they talked about him being a two-sport guy playing basketball. And it was so simple. Like, yeah, that was just a layup. We appreciate the call, Jeff. Be sure to call Thanks, back. Jeff. Sorry that we took your points. But, uh, yeah, that we haven't talked enough about that play. Gene, they did the little montage after he made that catch of the one against Syracuse and then last week going between his legs against Duke. The Keon Coleman highlight reel in one season. You know, it's going to live on for a long time, a Florida State highlight reel. It is something else. He's just going to yeah. keep amassing it. And it's different ways. Like, I, I'd even put that short catch and run on that reel because that's something very different. You combine that with a couple of the electrifying yeah, punt really. returns. What a get that was out of the portal. What would Florida State be without mm. Keon Coleman in the offense? I mean, yeah, what this is the kind of game. This would have been a scary game without him because not too many people were stepping up in this game to see him, especially early take control. So that's nine touchdowns so far this season. So he's on pace for some pretty uh, legitimate numbers if this continues to play out at this rate with him but yeah that that was a great play was that did he get that against seatbelt as they called that guy it's the right. db that they were going on and on about that seatbelt <laughs> i would have loved for keon to just do the seatbelt right there it would have been awesome it, it was a strange day gene <laughs> so um you know when he has that touchdown the uh the catch and run robert griffin the third says uh you know put it put it down like a toilet seat afterward <laughs> And I tweeted, I tweeted out, like, what does that even mean? RG3 from the press box responded to me. He responded on Twitter. Did he? And he responded, what did he say about vomiting? What was it? It was about toilet seats go down. I was like, geez, dude. Okay. What? Yeah, it didn't make much sense, but he took to Twitter. I didn't add him. I didn't tag him. I don't follow wow. him. He doesn't follow me. But apparently he was checking his ah. mentions on the break. So there's a bit of a window into uh, oh, RG3. Good, good for RG3 for reaching out to you. 
I will say, in our, and he's a hot topic on our message boards all the time. I will say, look, he's gotten better. He was he was hurt when he first started. He was just he, he, you couldn't stomach, you couldn't listen to him. He was so bad. And he still tries to be a little too funny at times and coming up with things like that. that just don't really make much sense. But you know what? He's you know what I like. He has passion. He's exciting. You know, he's into the game. He makes it a little bit more fun to watch sometimes. So I'm okay. I've I've kind of grown to be okay with RG three. Well, his I think his opinions are are usually spot on. Like he, you know, I think he was yeah. presenting he knows the RG3. game. Yeah. yeah, he knows the game. But sometimes it's just about you know the uh, he tries. It's entertainment. It's the entertainment business. But there it is. Uh, yeah. man on uh, like it was a toilet seat and I'm like I didn't understand that because what like you're referring to something as it I was like this is a reference I don't understand but there he goes during the commercial break right, he's checking yeah. his Twitter so go figure uh, right. th- yeah thanks to RG3 for responding to warchant.com <laughs> during a live broadcast on ABC what a strange day not strange that Florida State blew out Wake Forest though no. that, uh, that Gene Williams called it he said a 40 burger was coming I agreed a 40 burger was coming and look at that Florida State dropped 40 points on Wake Forest. They are now 8-0. and oh. We're going to take a short break, go back to the phone lines after this from our friends at DeLuna Coffee. Picture this. Saturday morning, November the 4th, 9 a.m. Game day's on your TV, and FSU has dismantled their ACC schedule to this point. They're 8 0. Kirk, Reese, McAfee, and Desmond are debating whether the Knolls are going to be the number one or number two seed in the playoff, and JT13 is the front man for the Heisman. Life's pretty good, and guess what? It's going to get better because your DeLuna Coffee War Chant bundle came in the mail yesterday. You tell your wife, I'm not superstitious, as you pour your DeLuna Voodoo Coffee blend into your new stainless steel tumbler. You add a scoop of Coco to die for from DeLuna and mutter a curse under your breath onto the pit secondary. No voodoo necessary for that, though. The opponent was doomed from the start. Johnny and Keon, they don't need DeLuna's help to make the opponent's life a living hell. But in honor of the 2023 FSU offense, enjoy the DeLuna Coffee Pick Your Poison Bundle. Check the drop-down menu for all available options. Wake up and enjoy DeLuna Coffee today. Head to DeLunaCoffee.com. That's DeLunaCoffee.com. You saw that message on the screen just before we came back. Do you want to go to Dublin for free? Here's your chance to go to Dublin for free to see Florida State and Georgia Tech. Head to SeminolesToIreland.com slash win. That's SeminolesToIreland.com slash win today for your chance for a round trip, game tickets, and three nights in Dublin courtesy of our friends at the Aer Lingus College Football Classic. It's that simple. It's a sweepstakes. All you got to do is go to that link, Seminoles to Ireland.com slash win for your chance for a trip for two to next year's season opening game, August the 24th, 2024, Florida State versus Georgia Tech. Simple. Hope to see you there because we certainly will be at warchant.com. He's Gene Williams. My name is Tom Lang. And today is another Hallmark Day for Florida State, Gene. Oh, beer number two is popped. Yep. I didn't hear that pop. Oh, yeah. But what, what do we got there? Is it another one of the Norwegians? No, same one. Same one of the uh, Academia Brewing Norwegian Wheat Ale. Norwegian? I, I had another choice, but no, this is good stuff. I'm going to town here. All right. He's not messing with it. Florida State didn't mess around today either. That second quarter was nice. Gene, it was 10-7 to 7 at one point. Florida State goes on a 24 to nothing run in the second quarter to close out. The first half to lead thirty-four to seven at the break, and after that, yeah, a, a pun from your brewery there. It's all academic. Florida State was uh, on its way to be undefeated, eight and zero, two thirds of the way through the season. That's kind of bittersweet. Makes it kind of sad that there's only four games left in the regular season for Florida State in twenty twenty-three. But they won them all, and Gene, that hasn't happened in nine years. So it feels pretty good to be eight and zero. It feels fantastic. It's been a while. Uh, for this program. And again, we say it every week, but the turnaround the last couple of years has been phenomenal. Uh, great job by Mike Norvell, Adam Fuller, you know, the ent- Alex Atkins, the entire staff. They've really done a great job getting this program to where it is now, where they are a complete team. And we saw the most complete game I think we've seen all season. So you like to see this as they progress. I think we talked about some of the little subtle changes they did on offense and the play calling. We like seeing that. Mm-hmm. We like the fact that the defense, you know, really, other than one play where they lost a little gap integrity uh, yep. on that long run, 
I mean, for the most part, I mean, it was almost a perfect game by the defense. Other than that, I guess and it's shortly thereafter, they had about a 19-yard pass to get them down the one-yard line. There was obviously a breakdown in coverage because the guy was wide open there. But, I mean, really, you have to give – and people don't like to give Adam Fuller credit, but you've got to give him a lot of credit, especially lately. It seems like the defense is getting better, Tom. Yeah, they are. It has 155 yards, sack adjusted, sack adjusted uh, for Wake on the ground, 155 yards on 44 carries. That's a really healthy yards mm-hmm. per carry clip. When you throw in, Gene, that there was a 51-yard run, yeah. a breakdown on that play. That was just two guys in the same gap. It, you know, you don't want to say it happens and you just shrug it off. you got to clean it up. But they did a really, really good job today. Gene, they've been the catalyst. Like I get it that Jordan Travis should be in the conversation for – the Heisman Trophy, and we agree with that. That's 100% true that Keon Coleman's electrifying, that Trey Benson's a stud, and Johnny Wilson, uh, he's gotten better and better at catching footballs, too, in the last month. He's had to fight through some injuries. They're loaded everywhere. But the defense after the bye week, and really even starting in that second half at Clemson, Gene, the defense has kind of led the way here for Florida State. We don't talk about Florida State as a defense first team, and these are some bad offenses that they've been playing. Mm -hmm. But they're doing what they're supposed to do to bad offenses, and that's the second year in a row that that's happening. So there's real improvement there that maybe we don't reflect on enough uh, at how much better Florida State has gotten defensively. Well, I think we saw sometimes early in the season where they, the defense was getting gashed at times. So of course, Boston College comes to mind. Mm-hmm. You just feel like the team has kind of learned from that. Uh, they're playing much sol- They're playing more consistently. The breakdowns are fewer and far between. You don't see guys running open in the middle of the field. You know, you had the one gap issue, but I mean, you had one. Um, like you said, you don't want to take that, but I mean, at, at some games you'd see five, six, seven of those during a game. So, I mean, that, that is a really good sign that they are seeming to get better and better. And it, what it does, it gives you confidence as a, whether you're a fan or meeting, you're watching this thing, you know, when they're up 10 points at some point, when the defense is playing well and dominate, you know, you know, they're going to be okay. Yep. Where there were times last year and earlier this season, like, eh, I don't know if any lead is really safe. Uh, because that defense could fall apart at any time. You just don't get that feeling anymore. Now, we'll see. They'll be tested a little bit here coming up by some teams, especially Miami. I think that'll be the true test of Florida State's defense and how far they've come because, obviously, they've got they got a lot of talent on that side of the ball and a pretty good offensive line. So I will be very curious to see how they hold up in that game. If, they, if they're if they legit in that game, then I think if they hold Miami to a reasonable, they're not going to shut them out. So these people, they get, let Miami score 17 points. I don't know. There's problems. If you hold them to something like that, then I'm really starting to think in my mind, this team's got a legit chance to maybe win the whole thing. But I, to me, I'm going to reserve judgment on a thing until that Miami game when they play a legit offense and see how that defense responds. Miami having issues today. They're down 10 to nothing with 8.25 to go in the second quarter to Virginia. Understandable. Yep. Uh, 24 to 7. NC State leads Clemson. They're about to start the fourth quarter. Uh, Clemson has a second and goal at the NC State one. But they've got a lot of work to do in the final mm. quarter if they're going to come away with a victory. Or else, Gene, Clemson will fall to 4-4 four and four on the season, 2-4 and four in ACC play, Ooh. and they would have games against Notre Dame. At, well, either way, they're going to have games against Notre Dame and North Carolina before the season ends. So they may not be bowl eligible, is what I you're mean, saying. They'd be staring at, at minimum. Yeah, yeah, the reality of six to seven losses is in play if they were to drop this one wow. to NC State. Isn't that – Here's – here, Touchdown, Kansas. We have a touchdown, oh. Kansas. This is according to the ESPN box score. It's a, it's a Devin Neal rushing touchdown from nine yards out. 38-33 with under a minute to go against Oklahoma. Certainly oh. they'll go for two in that situation. So it's under a minute to go. Kansas leads 38-33 pending the two-point conversion. Wow. An undefeated could go down, and it, that would be no more undefeated teams in the Big 12. That's uh, okay with us. As they would say in the red zone, we've got the witching hour here for college football. A lot of weird stuff going on. That game had a weather delay. It was a noon kick, so they're still playing uh, in Kansas. 38-33 pending the two-point wow. conversion. So wild stuff going on in college football right now. For that ACC game, that's all important in the ACC standings. Louisville still leads Duke 14 to nothing. Mm. That game is in the second quarter. So um, scoreboard watching is back in Florida State. That means you're good if you're scoreboard watching. Before we go back to the phones, I want to thank Kim. Kim and her wife, thank you very much. Kim, thanks for what you guys do. We love you, boys. Cheers to you as well. Thank you very much. And now we go to Ted, who is outside the stadium. He's been waiting patiently for nearly 20 minutes. Ted, welcome to the program. I'm sure you enjoyed taking in Knowles football on a Saturday afternoon, didn't you, sir? Yes, sir. Man, what you're talking about. Hey, you guys, give me a uh, thank you for taking my call. This is my first time calling. Uh, just give me a couple of minutes. I want to make two points. 
First, yeah. I am a 30 year veteran of warchant.com. Started way back in 96 with Gene. I'm a 30 year vet. Been on there almost 30 years. Uh, guys, let me tell you something. I'm 51 years old. When I was about nine or 10 years old, all of my friends would tease me and tell me professional wrestling was not real. They, 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 <laughs> the older kids, my older friends say, it's not real, man. It's not real. My dad used to take me all around South Carolina, put me on his shoulders. And he used to be Ric Flair, Dusty Rhodes, and all those guys back in the old NWA. Well, we were watching a match in Florence, South Carolina, one one night where this referee did. The referee got knocked out. Dusty Rhodes or somebody got hit over the head. They lost the match. The next night, uh, my dad said, hey, I said, hey, dad, can we go see it again in, in Columbia? They're supposed to have a rematch in Columbia. Well, they did the same finish. The exact mm-hmm. same thing. The exact same thing. I knew then. The, the referee was knocked out. The same guy was knocked out. It was all a show. These ACC referees, they gave guys, they scared the hell out of me. They really did. They scared the hell out of me. With these BS calls, and either Wake Forest has the greatest offensive line coach in the world in the history of college football, or they don't call holding on Wake Forest. Somebody showed me a stat of how many times they've called Wake Forest penalties on Wake Forest like the last five years of home for holding, it was something ridiculously low. And they don't say, I, I don't think Wake Forest is an O-line factory. As far as Travis and the Heisman guys, he, he, I, I, I think he's going to silently win it because I don't think Penance is going to go undefeated. Dylan Gabriel looks like he's going to go down today. The kid at Michigan is having all those. No, no wonder he looks so good. They cheat. Hell, they, they look like <laughs> they defense. If Travis can go, if he can go undefeated, okay, and win the ACC championship game, he's a good kid, no off-field problems. Uh, one of the things I think he's going to have in his favor, he's brought FSU back to prominence, and he's put in the work. So, uh, hey, don't don't count him out of, of winning the Heisman just yet. Now, if he drops the game, maybe. But I'm telling you, Penix is going to drop a game. Gabriel going down today. Marvin Harrison Jr., I, I don't know. Uh, the only guy I'm really looking at uh, ahead of Travis right now is Penix and the kid up at Michigan. But if he wins out, okay, and wins the ACC championship game, he should win the Heisman Trophy, period. Because Penix is going to lose they, – they're going to lose the game. And like I said, there's too much cloud noise over up there in Michigan. I'm going to hang up and listen to the show. Remember, 30-year vet war chant. Love you guys. Oh, that's outstanding. That's, that's great uh, call, Ted. Please call back again, man. We've got some great callers in the show. Really enjoyed Ted. Enjoy the enthusiasm. Hey, Ted, first of all, thank you for your loyalty to War Chant. You're awesome. And it's people like you that allow us to allow War Chant to grow like this and hire people like Tom and Jeff Cameron and Ira and all this stuff. So, so much props to you. And also props to you and all those FSU fans that were loud as heck at the stadium today. We could hear the War Chant reverberating the whole game. Uh, it, it's nice to see Knowles just take over Snuggy Hill like that. So, Good by you. And Tom, good, uh, interesting comments about the Heisman. You know, when you start to analytically look at how he broke down what's going on with Penix, and he makes a great point about Michigan. And you know how sensitive the Heisman folks are to any kind of controversy mm-hmm. and what's going on at Michigan right now. That's true. That soils them. There's going to be a handful of voters going to be like, you know what? When in doubt, I'm not going to vote for that Michigan guy because there's a cloud over them that they're cheating. So, yeah, very good call, Ted. Yeah, agreed. And uh, Ted, if you love Dusty Rhodes, you got a little bit in your cadence there for the wrestling yeah. fans uh, in, in the chat right now. There's a little bit of Dusty Rhodes in Ted's delivery, so feel, mm-hmm. feel free uh, to call back. Uh, thank you very much for the call. Yeah, Gene, the thing is, I think if Jordan – stats matter, unfortunately, a lot in Heisman's uh, races more than more than impact. Unless you're blowing teams out and, and you're putting the ball cap on every week in the third quarter, the Heisman voters don't understand the nuance of impact on the game that well. Um, you know, Jameis obviously was – he had a, a baseball cap on in the third quarter all of 2013. Uh, and people understood that. Bryce Young is a recent example for Alabama where he was out in garbage time a lot. But if Jordan puts up 300-plus yards of total offense and, you know, three touchdowns a week from here through the rest of the season, Gene, which is not inconceivable that he could do that, he's going to at least be there. He's going to at least be yeah. in. So uh, he needs I, that signature game though. I still think because you go back to Jameis, he had a top 10 Clemson team on the road. He put up ridiculous, had a ridiculous game in elite Florida defense. He chopped up at the end of the year. Um, I mean, he had some high moments he had, even though 
it wasn't a great team. Even the play against BC, I think about the so-called Hail Mary, but that made every single highlight thing. I yep. don't know if it like Jameis had that run against or not Jameis. I'm sorry. Jordan had that run against Florida last year. He needs some more stuff like that. I'm saying it's more about exposure marketing at this point for him really than putting up the numbers to me and all that, because as Seth pointed out, I think it is wide open and there's a lot of factors weighing in Jordan's favor. So a lot, a lot, a lot can happen in the next month, but I think he's the good thing is he's in the race right now. We know that. So NC state leads Clemson 24 to 14. Miami has a field goal on the board. Uh, so okay, they have now the matched their output at home that they had last year against Florida State. Uh, they're at three on the board for Miami, 4.03 to go in the second quarter, uh, 10-3 Virginia. And, uh, Oklahoma, how much time is left in that Oklahoma game? I can't uh, it looks like they're going to have a shot at the end zone here, Gene. You've got uh, uh -oh. real drama. They're at the Kansas 23-yard line with under 10 seconds to go, and Woo. they need the touchdown. So there's real drama there. I'm sure the chat will let us know what happens. Usually the chat lights yes. up with the result. Um, so, uh, we'll oh, see. Someone what just happens. said, uh, damn Kansas Swiss cheese defense. I don't know if that means anything, but yeah. Man, okay. Yeah. We'll see. Kansas is getting no, screwed. No, no. Oh boy. All right. Well, we'll see what happens there. We'll go to the phones. Let's see if we get this name right. Tat, Tat, is that right in Baltimore? Welcome to the program. Tat, go ahead. Hey, it's Pat, P A T. There we go. Pat in Baltimore. Gene, Gene, Gene and Tom, how are you guys? We're doing well. Pat, doing great. Welcome Pat. to the program. We're doing great, man. Go ahead. Thanks, man. So I am a 2011 alumni of Florida State, um, and I am a seven-year subscriber of War Chant. And uh, it's funny because my family thinks I'm crazy every game day. I tune into the pregame. I watch the game. I listen to the postgame. I watch the War Chant rap with Corey and Aslan. It's, it's an all-day affair over here. But anyway, I was just calling to say I'm super impressed with this team. I don't care what anyone says. We're going to win out. Uh, anyone that says we need to fire Fuller needs to reevaluate. <laughs> the team is on the right trajectory. The climb is going well. We escaped Wake Week with a victory, right? Like Hartman, he's gone. A.T. Perry, he's gone. Dave Clawson, he's still there. He's still old, and he's still losing <laughs> to Florida State, right? And one question for you guys before I leave. It's kind of a stretch, and I know we never cheer for Florida, but if Florida beats Georgia today, or Georgia slips up against like Missouri, say someone like that. LSU can go beat Alabama, and then Alabama beats Georgia in the SEC championship. Well, then we have an SEC conference champion with two losses. So yep. do they put Florida State at number one and number two in front of all these other fraudulent programs, leave their coveted SEC champion out, and then we just go and win? I don't know. I'm hoping for it. I know it stinks for recruiting if Florida or Miami is good. But we need them to win, boost the resume, get that number one seed. And uh, before I leave, put a smile on your face, my brothers, because we at Florida State. And when we do it, we do it big, Then oh, Thanks for letting me call in. There you go, Pat. Graduate of 2011. Pat. So Pat, when he was an undergrad, kind of saw the change happening in Florida State rising to prominence. Uh, your guy here, the guy on the left, graduated in December of 2009. I did not see that change. The offense had been better. No. But we had not flipped the script just yet. They had to, uh, in the pro combat uniforms, you guys remember that? Mm -hmm. Lonnie Pryor, Greg Reed, and EJ Manuel had to rally to make us bowl eligible in 2009. So uh, thank you very much, Pat. We appreciate that. Is that the Maryland game? Am I remembering correctly? They had to beat Maryland that last regular season game. 100% true. Wow. And down goes Oklahoma. The ups heard. So for those of you keeping score at home, Florida State, no shenanigans can get in their way if they're undefeated. There will now be, at maximum, four Power 5 teams that are undefeated after championship Saturday. Florida State wins out. The committee is powerless, even if they wanted they can't to. can't keep FSU out now. They are powerless to do anything about it. Wow. Well, given Pat's scenario uh, a little bit. First, I'm not never written for Florida, um, so throw it out out there. Um. Is it? Don't you still think, Tom? Even if the SEC cannibalizes each other and whatever, they don't have an undefeated. You don't still don't think. Assuming Michigan, Ohio State run the table, play each other, don't you still think they're going to put the winner of that game? Because it's going to be a high top, two top five teams, yep. and all that. Because it's the last game of the season, it's going to be crazy ratings. The winner of that game is going to be number one because they love the Big Ten, and which means FSU would be number two. Yeah, uh, I would agree. Uh, I think also, like, so you could see a scenario where two big, big Ten teams make it if if they both run rough shot over everybody, and then there's one's one, the one seed, one's the four, maybe, and they slip an FSU and an SEC team, assuming the Pac-12 kind of falls apart and 
I could see it, that. Yeah. It may or may not. Oregon has an impressive uh, game going right now in terms of boosting its resume. They're up 21 to three at Utah. And it's in the second. Okay. Oh, that's that's Utah's not bad. So if uh, Oregon continues on that road, they make it to the Pac-12 and maybe they beat Washington. You could. So we're going to end up playing Oregon again out west is what you're saying. You know, Gene, I said it before the year. I'm not superstitious, but Florida State played in the first BCS title game ever. They played in the last BCS title game ever. They played in the first yeah. college football playoff ever with a four-team format. They may play in the last one, and there's symmetry to that. So maybe, indeed, Florida State would be going out west. We will uh, we will find out. Uh, but, again, uh, a lot of things happening today. Mm -hmm. Interesting games across the country in the ACC. Florida State's game was not one of those. Interesting to us because we like kicking butt. But not in terms of the upset specials, the super dogs, as they call them. Kirk Herb Street put Florida State on upset watch early this past week. No, sir. 40 what are you talking about, Kirk? Come on, buddy. 40 burger for Florida State, a 41 to 16 win. This is the last call for phone calls. Last call for phone calls. We got nobody in the hopper right now. Uh, we'll take two. We will take two more callers before the show uh, signs off for the evening. Georgia has just taken, folks, a 24 to 7 lead. Ooh, Over the 20 years. Wow. Yeah, that is uh, not too bad at all. And the uh, the one note we have, I, I see somebody, John, here says one game at a time, boys. Understood. What we do know is that Florida State will not be playing in prime time next week against Pitt. It will either be a noon kickoff or a 3.30 kickoff. Those are the two time slots we'll know later today or early tomorrow. Go ahead. Well, let's go. Let's go with the three thirty. I mean, we've had enough of the nooners. I mean, I, you know what? We, Tom and I selfishly like it because then we can have a nice dinner and just our evening is off. But come on, we've had enough nooners. Three thirty is fine. Give us a little time to have some fun beforehand. So do, do a favor to the fans. Yep, agreed. Three thirty sounds good to me. Okay, we've got one person in the hopper right now. We're going to go to you in just a minute, Gene. Let's talk about what's coming up on Warchant.com the next couple of days. We've got the Sunday Smash tomorrow night, seven o'clock. That will be me and Ira. And assuming that travel itineraries are okay for the uh, world traveler, the United States traveler, that is Dominic Robinson, he will happen by for some analysis. And then a special program on Tuesday night. This yes. is the first of its kind on War Chant TV, folks. We'll have a, a nice little fancy graphic and title for it in the days to come. But bookmark it now. For those 600-plus of you that are watching, we will have a live reaction show to the first college football playoff rankings release it's halloween night it's tuesday october 31st i believe the show begins at seven o'clock we'll be hanging out for the reveal and then get an initial reaction for you know 20 30 minutes afterwards uh, but florida state is going to be in the top four according to the college football playoff committee as of tuesday we will have a live reaction show on tuesday night gene on the website side i know tomorrow you're leading the way with the pro football focus grades going to be a lot of dudes in the green i would imagine for florida state uh, but that and more coming up tomorrow on the site yeah, might be a little bit, little, little some travel stuff. We'll see. I, worst case, and I apologize if we put off lazy, worst case, hopefully tomorrow, but if not, Monday morning, we'll have it up by then. So we'll have the pro football focus grades. Yeah, a lot of very curious. Like we talked about earlier, the thing I do like about PFF, and I know there's debatable stuff on there, but they will, we talked to like Braden Fisk earlier, like a lot of unseen stuff he did in this game. It doesn't show up in the box score, but I think he'll have a high grade because he was very disruptive. On that slow mesh that Wake Forest runs, players like him, I want to see. I mean, how is Keon Coleman graded out? Some of these other guys. So, yeah, it's always fun to see an independent grade of guys like that. Um, yeah, and I'm looking forward to that show. What is your, so, Tom, what is your prediction? Where do you think the playoff committee is going to rank FSU? And will game control be brought up at some point? Uh, game control might be brought up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you never know. I think Florida State is going to be top two. I do. I, I think. Wow. Okay. I think the committee is going to look at strength of schedule or strength of record, however you want to term it. And I think they're going to, you know, view Florida State favorably in that situation. This is also a dog and pony show before you get into late November, early December. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, if they wanted to have fun with Michigan and put them down to three or four and penalize them for something that has, you know, little to do with their uh, their game control or their strength of schedule, they could do that if they wanted. But, Gene, when you're looking at FPI rankings, and they love FPI rankings, SP mm. Plus rankings, Florida State is the only team to beat a top, uh, three top 30 teams in that metric entering today. So the strength of schedule favors Florida State. Uh, the ability to schedule out of conference, which they really they, they tend to value that, a game against LSU, that should come into play. I think the committee might give a nod to Florida State in the top two. I, I, that might be a little optimistic, 
but I, I wouldn't be stunned if you see Florida State at number two on Tuesday night. What do you think? Tom, I love about you that you're Mr. Positivity. I love that you come in here and you're just expecting the best of people. I'm the skeptic, on the other hand, I'm the conspiracy guy. I'm sorry, but TV and all these people in the committee, they love the SEC and they love the Big Ten. That's where all the money goes and they want to push those teams. So I, I think FSU's three. I think they're going to have Michigan and um, Georgia will be up in the top two with FSU three. But, man, I, if you're right, it will give me a whole new perspective on the world, how positive <laughs> things are and wonderful things are, that they are not looking at things that way. And they will actually look at the facts and not what is good for the bottom line. But I, yeah, I hope you're right. I will take three, though. Again, the bottom line is FSU controls its own destiny. Look, you'd like FSU to be in New Orleans. That's a thing for me. I don't, I don't like the fact that FSU – can run the table, do everything it's told, and be to- basically have a road game mm-hmm. to start the playoffs. That's a concern for me to, for that to happen. So hopefully they're able to crack it. But again, there's still a month ago. So many things is going to happen between now and then. There's so many scenarios where Florida State could be the last man standing, and they have no choice but to make FSU number one. Uh, agreed. I just I think they're also looking for um, shock value and putting Florida State in the top two nationwide. That, that people will be like, what? Florida State in the top two? You think so? You think that's shock value? Uh, the way that the national media has framed Florida State, hell, Pat McAfee had Florida State at number six in yeah, college game day. I, I agree. I well, it, I mean, they're doing it for engagement. I think it would it would inc- putting Florida State in a place that people don't expect creates a hell of a lot more engagement than putting yeah. uh, Washington. That's, that, so you're doing a conspiracy from the other side. You're saying putting Florida State up high actually creates a different kind of dynamic that they want to push. That's correct. It, it's uh, it's positive. Make them number one, then. If you really want to do it, make them number one and piss Georgia. Fans. Imagine the Georgia onslaught. We're the defending champs. We just blew out the mighty Gators. I mean, how dare you put us number two? Now, that would create some ripples. It would. And that's, yeah, it's conspiracy, <laughs> uh, it's, uh, TV ratings, all that kind of stuff. They, they shop that around. I mean, they, they, they are, you already know they're lying, Gene. Remember when they used to say that it's in a, it's in an envelope and we don't oh, know. Yeah, yeah. And then Sports Center at six o'clock had the new rank. They thing. leaked it out. Yeah, they leaked it out by accident. <laughs> Oh, what a dog and pony show. But we'll be there. We love the dog and pony show. Yep. We missed it. So we'll be there on Tuesday night. We now go to Paul in the 843. Paul is leaving the game today. You can hear the crowd behind him. Go oh. ahead. <laughs> hey, guys. How are y'all? First time caller. I appreciate y'all taking my call. No, I shot 85, heading back down to Charleston. My, 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 my two sons and I came up to the game. It was, it was well worth the drive. What an experience. That's really cool, Paul. If you had to estimate the ratio of Florida State fans to Wake Forest fans, what percentage would you give Garnet and Gold people in the stands today? Man, accurately, probably had at least be 60-40, if not 70-30. It was, it was impressive. It nice. really was. That's awesome. I tell you, we the band, though, because the tomahawk chop was all over the place. The band, the band plays such a role, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Paul, were you able to get on Snuggy Hill? Did you hang out there at all? Uh, we tried to get in it. I was going to have my sons get in, and then everybody was packing in because they were following the shade around. It was actually comical. Um, yeah, and the big thing I was calling in, and, and Tom, I, my moniker on, on the live shows is Hog Watcher, so I'm a, oh. I'm a trench guy at heart. I, I had an opportunity to meet you and Jeff in uh, New Orleans at the bar when everybody left. It was just you, me, and Jeff sat there and talked football for like three hours and drinking adult beverages. Drinking adult beverages for three hours? I've never done such Woo. a thing, Paul. But uh, Hog Watcher, we now no, know I think your you name. Were super, you were supervising. You were supervising. <laughs> there, there, there it is. Yeah, that's uh, outstanding. So, what? yeah, what stood out to you today, Paul? You know, the biggest thing is I don't understand why we keep getting pressure on three-man rushes. I, I mean, I love JT to death. I just feel like sometimes it's almost like a double-edged sword because he's got such happy feet and can spin out so much. I just love to see him step up. Makes the, I feel like the O line's doing a lot better than what people think when you really watch the game from the inside out. Oh, that's a good point. That's a good point. It's a good observation, Paul. I mean, hey, Tom, you talk about that. Maybe maybe get uh, Dominic to comment on some of that stuff too. And I know that's the thing. When you, I think the more athletic, speedy quarterbacks have a tendency to use that as their crutch to roll out when there's pressure starts to do instead of stepping up, which helps you see the see the receivers and head of you or run and get that head start doing that. So that's a very good observation. Yeah, Paul, we hope to hear from you again. Thanks for uh, doing your part today, going out to the game and cheering loud. Yes. So one bit of insight from camp that I'll share regarding that. We all came out of camp seeing the same things, and it's tough, you know, because you're going against yourselves. It's a limiting factor. You're playing, you know, your own defense every day, so you, you don't really know what you have. But I will say, Paul, we all expected pass protection to be worse than run blocking 
after camp, which is crazy because it's kind of been mm-hmm. backwards since the season started. But I think the first impression that Jordan had during camp, even though he's got a green non-contact jersey on, was there was a lot of pressure up the middle because there was in camp. So maybe that could account for some of his um, propensity to flush outside the pocket a little bit. But uh, I do want to clean one thing up from earlier today, Gene. Uh, I know I believe it was Wes was talking about he didn't see Robert Scott. Robert Scott did play. And he played a, a more than I expected to see him play. By the really? end of the game, I'll be interested to see when uh, Pro Football Focus releases the snap counts. But Robert was available today. Bless Harris played for most of the balance of the game at left tackle. But it'll be interesting to see the snap mm-hmm. counts, as always. And that, okay. That's probably my favorite part of the report after the game. Because Maybe Florida- I have a little bit of time tomorrow. Maybe I'll just do a quick thing on the snap counts and leave the and let, put the top two or three grades or whatever's out there instead of the deep. We do. I do a pretty deep analysis at every segment. Across the board, have you ever seen our pro football focus grades? But I know a lot of people want to know those snap counts. So maybe that's what I'll do if I only have a limited amount. It's because it does take a cup two, three hours to crunch all that stuff out every day. Yep. We now go to Havana, Florida, and we're talking to is it Exit? Go ahead with your name, sir. What's your name? Hey, hey, it's Exit Smith, E X I T S M I T H out of Havana. Excellent. All right. And I know it's a strange name. It could have been worse. It was 71. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I just want to say that. Uh, the one thing we haven't mentioned today is we don't have a quality law. Yeah. You know, we've uh, – Well, that's a problem. That time game yeah. management, we don't have a quality law. Yeah, that's right. No body clock issues with a noon kick, nothing like that exit. I mean, it's a, that's the one thing we need to put on our resume. Isn't that correct? It seemed like the entire uh, 2014 season was just a season of uh, we didn't have a quality law. So, I, you know, that's something I, I won't forget. Before I retired from the Marines and moved here uh, to northern Tallahassee. And uh, just glad to be here. Glad to be enjoying these great seasons. You know, this is amazing. Oh, it is. It is. Exit, thank you very much for your call. And thank you, as always, for your service. Your service, me. yes. We very much Yeah, I mean, I, I would rather not take the I, – I get the quality loss thing. Let's not have a uh, – I'm fine just not having any losses, quality or other rights. Unless you're in the SEC, I don't think you can have a quality loss. Uh, agreed. Although they're trying really hard with the pack this year, aren't they, Gene? They're trying really, really hard with the Pac-12 uh, to prop it. Why, why do that? That conference doesn't exist after this year. So what's the point? Yeah, agreed. That was our last caller for this evening was exit. We're going to take one quick break and then reset what is to come. Uh, I don't know that we're going to get Corey or Ira from Snuggy Hill. It might just be because there's a mosh pit of everybody who took that's over true. the damn hill today. You know that's going to be a humongous part of the War Chant rap presented by Vitamin Energy that is coming up on War Chant TV shortly. I will say before we go to our final break today uh, that Georgia leads Florida 26-7. to That is a 26-7 to score midway through the second quarter. And then looking in the ACC, Clemson is on a rally. Seven minutes to go. It's 24-17. NC State leads. Clemson trying to make a rally there. Louisville leads Duke 17 to nothing just before halftime. And then at the half, they're still waiting to start their third quarter. Virginia leads Miami 10 to 3. We'll be right back with uh, closing thoughts and also some more from our friends at Luna Coffee after this quick break. Our head coach has a taste for the finer things in life. Personally, I like to picture him in front of a fireplace, clad in a garnet and gold velvet robe, with a glass of Lagavulin 16 and a Cuban cigar. Rumor has it, Coach has a brand new Bengal tiger rug and a photo of Brian Kelly on his mantle. Now, while Coach has high-powered offensive weapons at his disposal, FSU fans need only one thing to start their game day. That's DeLuna Coffee's Blue Angels Blend. Talk about high-powered. This jet fuel in a cup will have you feeling like you can take down a 500-pound tiger yourself. Two cups will have you wanting to boost an F-18 for the pregame flyover. Our advice, though, leave the hunt to the professionals. It doesn't mean that you still can't enjoy the finer things in life, just like Coach Mike. Trust me when I tell you, DeLuna Coffee makes for one hell of an espresso martini. Head to DeLunaCoffee.com today to find out more. You want that DeLuna coffee. You need that DeLuna coffee. Florida State is 8-0, and here's a great way to celebrate from our friends at DeLuna Coffee. About 25% off your next order. Use the code WARCHANT25 at checkout. This applies to anything and everything except 
the Bogu, uh, Bogu, yeah. Voodoo Bogos. There you go. Combining the words, uh, Voodoo Blend, Espresso Blend, or buy one get one free. So the discount is already there. And then there is the War Chant Pick Your Poison Bundle that includes a nice fresh new tumbler, steel tumbler for my friends at Deluna Coffee. Everything else is twenty five percent off. You get to the this payment screen to the top right of your order screen, you'll see a place to put in the promo code WARCHANT25. That is at DeLunaCoffee.com. If you don't like shopping on the internet, well, then you can always go to Publix, west of I-4 and to the east of the border of the Florida Panhandle, everywhere in between at your local Publix in the Locals section, the Florida Locals section. You'll see an example of what it looks like. Be on the lookout for that header right there. Florida Locals, you will find the Blue Angels blend, the Midnight Shift, all of the great things that DeLuna Coffee brings to the table. And here's a little something more about our friends at DeLuna Coffee. They are extremely involved in the community. So they've got 30 years plus in the coffee business in terms of experience. But Ed and Brett Lemmix are awesome in their local community. A percentage of proceeds from the Blue Angels Blend, the Midnight Shift, and the High Noon Lawman's Blend all go to respectively the following charities. The U.S. Navy Morale Welfare and Recreation Program, the Rally Foundation of Pensacola, and the Escambia County Sheriff's Foundation. Outstanding folks at DeLuna Coffee. They support Florida State Sports. They support War Chant Programming. Thank you very much to Ed and Brett and their support all season long. Gene, this was a good sponsorship for them. We haven't lost with the DeLuna Coffee postgame sponsorship mm. yet. Knock on wood. Pretty good year, isn't it? Maybe they can do if the, if the national championship percent off. We could do something like that. How, what percent off? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're almost that good. It hasn't been brought up, and I don't know if I've gotten taken that deal down yet. Tom, is the one dollar oh, for yeah. two months that's still going? Oh, look $1. at that! Look at yeah, that. how have I not turned that off yet, Tom? I must be crazy. You know, I may have to keep this going until FSU loses, so we may keep this special going, or I may decide, you know what, I got to turn this thing off. It's crazy any day now. Are, are we taking pay cuts that I'm not aware of, Gene? Uh, it's a dollar for might two have, months. Might have to. Yeah, we're going to warchant.com, top right of the screen. You'll see the green sign up button. All you got to do is sign up for the $1 for one month, and then you put in the code FSU in the number one in the promo code section, $1 for two months of access. That gets you all the way through signing day in December. Florida State is on pace for a top five signing class, and it may be even better than that before it's all said and done. Ooh. And it'll get you basically on the doorstep of a college football playoff game if Florida State would be so fortunate to be 13-0 and at that point. So $1 for two months of access. Folks, I don't you know, say this lightly. Honestly, give us a shot. Please, give us a shot. You will not be disappointed with the coverage at warchant.com. It is exceptional. Coming up on warchant.com, there he is, Mike mm -hmm. Norvell, 8-0. Corey Clark's column from today's proceedings. Uh, Gene, I'm going to take a guess and say that 90% of it was constructed at halftime as this was a laugher at the break. Florida State led 34-7 to on the way to a 41-16 to victory over Wake Forest. But that column will be uh, available. The 3-2-1 mm -hmm. from Irish Chauffel. On the channel, you've got the War Chant Rap, Mike Norvell's post-game press conference. In addition to, I think Director Ben said, behind the scenes, Gene, Florida State uh, sent a lot of players to the dais. So you've got a lot of interviews uh, to check out as you're watching the afternoon and evening windows. Uh, so there's a ton of content coming to warchant.com. We keep you covered. And, of course, recruit reactions as well. I got to think, Gene, they're very pleased with the proceedings today. Are those 2024 and 2025 recruits? They absolutely have to be. And I think we are poised. Speaking of recruiting, stay tuned because I know that Miami game is supposed to be the biggest home recruiting weekend of the year. So that's coming up in just a couple of weeks. And we will have you completely covered on that war chant. Michael Langston, Matt Lasser doing great great work for us, creating all the content and the premium recruiting board. And we'll preview a lot of that stuff, have a list of all the visitors coming in. But still, we got Pitt coming up first. I want to look past Pitt, but I'm just letting those people, the recruit next know what's going on. And you want to st stay tuned for that one big time. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I, we're trying to work on Corey. We hear he may be popping in, though. But if not, you know, his column, his column should be up. You, you pointed out that he write, probably wrote it at halftime. <laughs> it should be up quickly because last week he tried to write the Mike Norvell, what is going on with these fourth down calls at halftime, and then had to rewrite it after Florida State just blitzkrieg Duke in the second half. Uh, yeah. It threw that away. Interesting point uh, that comes from that, Gene. Florida State had a fourth and two near midfield, and they punted today. Yes. They punted. But and that's they know your opponent. I like that because you knew the defense was so good. Don't give them a short field. Make them drive the length of the field. They were not going to be able to do that. So that's maybe a little sign of Mike 
Norvell kind of, you know, reading the room a little better than he has at times. Yeah, again, I think that was based on, I'm not going to let this get squirrely. I know this building's ridiculous, and if the officials have an opening, they're going to take it and they're going to run through it like uh, Trey Benson on an 80-yard screenplay. If they see an opening, they're going to take it and they're going to throw the hankies and, and assist Wake Forest into a game. They pin it in the uh, at the half-yard line. Outstanding. That was Mastromano's best punt of the day. But a key play and a key moment from Jerry on Jones there to encircle the ball, make sure it never touches yeah. the plane. And Florida State, right after that, Gene, uh, they benefit with a field goal. Uh, another and one I, and, from Pitsy, too. Yeah, and I appreciate RG explaining the rule on there because I think a lot of people are always confused about that. NFL and college have different rules on downing a putt. So the, the college, you are allowed to be in the end zone as yep. long as the ball does not cross the plane. Because I see it all the time in the NFL, if an NFL player is in the end zone touching a ball, even though it never crosses a plane, it's a touchback. Right. So it was good. So the great play by Jerry on that. And that was about Master Mano's only good putt of the game, but it worked out well. He struggled a little bit. But if there's going to be a game, you're going to be a little bit off. That's the one. But he got his punts off. Everything's fine. He didn't run past the line of scrimmage when he punted, so we'll take that. Reverend Felton says, guys, I'm telling you, this team is peaking at the right time. Nobody's going to want to play us. Yeah. Gene, I would agree with that. They're looking better and better as the week goes along. Complimentary football. The kick return game has come to life a little bit mm. in recent weeks. Obviously, it was a huge moment last week for Deuce Span, but a couple of good returns today. The defense has been solid and consistent, and the offense looks like it's got more weapons to play with now, too. This I I would agree that's a pretty good assessment from Mr. Reverend Felton there. Yeah, I mean, I, I mentioned that earlier. I like the fact this team seems to be peaking, especially the defense seems like it's getting better and better. Again, we'll see. They're playing. The last couple teams have not been great offensively, um, but whatever, they're getting the job done. You're not seeing the breakdown. Sometimes it doesn't matter to the defense. If you're, you know, if you're out of position, you're out of position, and we're seeing less of that, which you should, would expect as you play more together, as you're used to the system, there should be more consistency as the season goes on. We're seeing that. And we'll see a couple of guys were back. I, I didn't bring this up, Tom. I know a couple of guys. I know at one point Peyton went out, but I thought he came back in. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, Shot first in. was banged up. He got first got poked in the eye, and then he came back in. Um, there's a couple others. Did you see, did we did FSU actually have anybody go off that maybe didn't come back? It was over oh, Renato Green. A guy rolled up on his ankle a little bit on the play. I don't know. Did he? I don't know if he came back in or not. So I was a little concerned about some of those, but it didn't look anything was too bad. That's one of the things that uh, definitely could check out on warchant.com after the game's over. That's the one that concerned me the most because yeah, it, yeah. it didn't look like there was any apparent contact uh, for Renardo, but he has been so locked down. I mean, oh, he's yeah. far and away your best corner. So that that's um, that's a big development. We'll see what, what comes from that. Now, obviously, Florida State is cloak and dagger about those things. But he walked off under his own power. Shaheem Brown had an issue at one point today too, Gene. Uh, I believe that was on the touchdown for Wake Forest, the first touchdown they mm -hmm. scored where he came up with a, it looked like a, maybe a shoulder. I, I don't know. It's hard to say. Uh, but we will keep an eye on that because uh, Florida State was down a lot of players today, Gene, and that led to a little bit of consternation given that you didn't exactly know who's going to be available on the offensive line. That's been a turnstile every week in terms of who's available. Uh, and then Johnny Wilson was out. Hakeem Williams was out. So Florida State overcame that. That's the one thing in a blowout win. You just don't want to see anybody go down and get hurt. Uh, but it looked like most everybody was – okay, these were minor things rather yeah. than season-changing things. Yeah, I want to have Ronaldo, uh, Bernardo back in there soon. Obviously, worst case, you know, hopefully if it's an ankle sprain. I mean, again, I'm not playing a Twitter doc or anything. I don't really know, but it just it was funny. The broadcasters go, well, we didn't see anything that happened. It was obvious at the end of that play they rolled up on his ankle. Uh, hopefully, if it is that, it's a low ankle, minor low ankle thing, which maybe you miss a week at the most. I want him. I want FSU at full strength. I want all those guys back for Miami. I think you got to have your best shot for that. It's looking more and more like as Florida's being blown out by Georgia again, but Miami's losing too. Would that would that be so Miami to have that? I mean, play so well after that horrific non kneel down and lose to Georgia Tech, and then play so well after that to only lose at home to Virginia. That would be the most Miami thing to do. And then give us a run. They'll be up for that game. I mean, oh, they, oh, that's a thing. They are, they're looking ahead to Florida State two weeks early. That's how much they care about that game. It could very well be. Noel Buck 83 under the gun. Thank you very much. Love the fact that we jumped out early today. We'll be at the game in Pittsburgh, hoping uh, to see the same, but add a dominant third quarter to the ranks. So, yeah, again, Florida State at Pitt next mm -hmm. week. It's going to be an afternoon kick of some kind. It might be noon or it might be 3.30. But, Gene, the Noel fans are out. I've already gotten a couple of texts from my friends this week saying, are you going to be at Pitt? I think we're going to have another really solid showing on the road next week, just like today, where one of our callers said 60-40 split for the Knolls on the road. i got to imagine we're going to show up in droves next week. And that is it. Yeah. You know what? It's a great place. It's a fun road tip. I mean, I, I lived in Pittsburgh for a while. It's such a fun town. 
and great food there, great atmosphere. It's a fun stadium. Obviously, we all have memories. Was it, was it the last time they played up at Pitt, Tom? The, the Jameis 2013 opening, was that the only other time they played at Pitt? I can't think of another one. Uh, I think that's correct. I can check that. That's unbelievable how long Pitt's been in the conference. We've only been up there for one road game. But, oh, if you're going, I'm jealous. Um you know, doing this logistically, doing post game shows, it's hard for us to be at road games. We did it at LSU. We had to sit through the middle of a nightclub. We got it done for you, um, but it's hard for us to go on the road for games. But I would, I, that's one of my favorite road trips is being up at Pitt. So yep. anybody heading up there, have a great time at Pitt. So, Am I right, Tom? That's, did we play up there another time? We played in uh, the 80s there. We played there. Oh, no, 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 no. I knew that with Dan Marino and all that. Yeah. I was talking yeah. AC, since ACC. Since that Pitt's been in the ACC, we've only played up there once. Yeah, that was, was a, the Dan Marino game back up there way back in the day. Yeah. 2013 is the only time in the ACC they came here in the COVID year. Um, mm-hmm. And as I recall, that's when Kenny Pickett saw how bad the defense was at Florida state. He no, was hurt and he decided to play uh, because he knew he could rack up some yeah. serious numbers uh, and Florida state did not win that particular afternoon, but they won that opener in 2013 at Pitt. Yes, Gene, that was did. Jimbo Fisher versus Paul Christ as the head coach. Ooh. 10 years ago. So before we sign uh, off here, uh, just a, a couple of uh, messages from one legend. Touchdown, Abajo! Touchdown, Abajo! Gotta hit it. Touchdown, Abajo! Touchdown, Abajo! Galactic. Touchdown, Abajo! Touchdown, Abajo! The 500 plus of you who waited, there you go. There's your reward. That's what they were waiting for. Looks like Snuggy Hill. I don't know. I don't think Corey's going to make it here, folks, but uh, you could check out the wrap. On the channel, it'll be going up very soon. The War Chant Rap presented by Vitamin Energy. This indeed is a, a one hell of a post game show. Great job, Ed Lemmicks, jumping on board just before Florida State and LSU because Deluna Coffee's post game shows are a perfect eight for eight. We're going to have to burn that copy for that one. Uh, that yes. one. Being oh. eight, no. And literally, Ed jumped on board day of the LSU game. Now that's, yeah. that's what's beautiful about this. And he had a feeling this is a special team I want in. Yep, exactly right. John says that Corey's rolling down the hill right now. So that's, <laughs> that's <laughs> I want video if Corey's rolling down the hill. There's got to be some kind of hijinks there. There has to be. I, I can't wait to see what it is they pull. But this could be the last time we're on that hill, Gene. Could be playing in a different oh, color. It's a little sad, a little sad, but at least we went out with a bang. Yep. Uh, also, folks, be sure to tune into the ACC Network uh, presentation of the new format schedule for the 17 team league on Monday or not, or don't, or don't. That's yeah. fine. Uh, let's see. Behind the scenes, Terry Clark is our call screener. He is uh, always fantastic. Thank you, Terry. You and this from California. Thanks, Terry. And he's on the road too. Yep, he's head West Coast. Maybe he's scouting some sites for us uh, if we play uh, in that road yes. bowl for the uh, the college football playoff. We will see you on this channel live tomorrow night. It'll be Irish Ophel and myself uh, at seven o'clock for the Sunday Smash. We will also again see you on Tuesday. Tuesday night, we will have a watch along. For the college football playoff Ooh. rankings, it'll be a reveal on. T- oh, Gene's ready. I think Gene's going to be on that show. I want to be on that one because I'm ready. Right. Uh, you know, the, we get a, where I live in Tallahassee. We get a lot of trick or treaters, though, so I don't know if, if if the wife is ready to take that on by herself at seven o'clock. <laughs> she might need my help because they will literally line up outside our door. They know they know what 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 I give out. They know we're good with the big candy bars. Yep, it's the same thing here. So we might be pulling shifts in order to make sure that the kids yeah. are taken care of on a Tuesday night. Thank you, Troy Knoll, who is uh, dealing with six inches of snow today in oh, the high country oh, uh, up in Wyoming. Yeah, so thank you, Troy. Appreciate you. Thank you to everybody who participated in the program. To those of you who contributed, I'm talking to Florida Man in Texas, Joshua, mm-hmm. Double D Supreme, Zenol, James S., Kim, and Noel Buck. Thank you very much. Everybody else who contributed, just questions, comments like Mike is doing right now. Thank you for being here. Without you, Mike, we don't exist. So we very much appreciate you. For Gene Williams, who is uh, in the Blue Ridge, somewhere undisclosed right now, and he's going to be enjoying some more Norwegians. Yes, but I might break out a little, you know, I'm not got a little wine and cheese up here, but I got some cheese and wine and watch the sunset over the mountains here, the Blue Ridge Mountains. Looking forward to that and basking the glow of eight. No, baby. Yeah, a little wine is not a bad idea after beating somebody on Tobacco Road. For Director Ben behind the scenes, my name is Tom Lang. Thank you, everybody. Hit the like button on the way out. It takes just one second. We appreciate you. This has been the War Chant Game Day postgame call and show presented by our friends and brewed up by DeLuna Coffee. Good night. Eight and oh.